Well, hello, 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 everybody, and welcome to ZBrush Live. Um, let's do a quick sound and video test. If you guys can see me, uh, see my screen and hear me okay, uh, let me know so I can get going. Uh, sorry I got uh, on a little bit uh, later, but we were having a few technical issues, but I think we're good now. Um, so, yeah, if you can see my video and hear my voice, uh, if you could let me know in the chat, that would be awesome. Right. Yep. Okay. Uh, Irene Devin is saying everything is good. Okay. All right. Uh, we've got more of these um, cryptic messages. Uh, so real quick, some housekeeping, like, subscribe, do all the internet things, uh, leave a comment. Uh, all those things help us. Uh, so please do that. And uh, it'll take a second of your time, but it would definitely mean a lot to us. And also, if you have any questions, you can ask during the stream. And if you um, um, <clears throat> uh, don't get them answered here, you can always uh, leave them in the comments and we hopefully we will get back to you uh, with an answer. Okay, so without further ado, let's get on to the next stage. So we're um, pretty much almost done with this. Today we're just going to paint. Um, I did a little bit of work off uh, screen, but not too much. And um, so today we're going to pose and paint the model, right? Um, let me do one other thing here while I'm thinking about it. I did I renamed a lot of stuff, but not this one. So here we go. We'll rename the floor as well. And also we don't need to look at it. Okay, so one of the things that I did... Um, is, uh, hang on, I've got a question. Let me answer that real quick. Why when downloading the Maxon app does it take my access away from my pirated trap code sweet play? I have no idea, <laughs> Cyanesis. I, I, I've, I don't know what the answer to that is. Um, but um, my guess is if you have a valid Maxon license, then you should contact their tech support and they can probably um, help you with your issue. Okay, so here I'm just gonna turn transparency on uh, so I can show you what I've done. Now, unfortunately, there is no kind of smart way to pose a hard surface model in ZBrush. Um, I mean, there are, and I've used uh, quite a, a few different ways of doing it, but it's, it's not a very straightforward process. Posing characters has become a lot easier because of Character Creator, but um, 
but uh, posing hard surface is still kind of a, a bit of a cryptic thing, uh, but it's not too bad. So one of the ways I'd done it earlier is I basically would move uh, kind of the, the base here, kind of the hip uh, joint, and then everything would kind of align to that. And then I'd move the top leg and everything on be below that would align to that as well. Um, and I'd written scripts to do that for my previous mech, um, which is this one right here. So uh, let me just load it real quick and I'll show you guys. Um, so for the um, for this mech right here, this one, um, I have a lot of poses for it. So here you can kind of see the legs are raising up. Here I've got a couple of poses. Um, and then I've got one which I don't have here, which is of them running uh, on a field. And, and uh, those were all kind of posed in that method. But I didn't want to do that for this just because it's kind of not a, as a big of a project. Uh, so what basically I'm going to do is I have a Z-Sphere rig that I made that I put inside here. So this is what it looks like. And this is pretty easy to pose uh, by itself. So like if I want to pose the leg, I'll just go to rotate here and I'll just move this leg up. Now I've got symmetry on, which I don't really want. So I'm going to turn that off. So I basically will simulate the pose here and just uh, maybe the ankle is kind of doing this, you know, uh, the foot is doing this. And then I'll go over here. You know, one of the feet needs to be planted unless it's running, in which case I don't know if I've seen these things run, but in the, which case, like this is kind of the kind of thing that would happen. Um, but this thing isn't running, so we just need to figure out some sort of interesting pose. Now, the other thing I also noticed is that this um, over here rotates, so um, I can rotate it from here, I guess. Or maybe I can add another joint. So here I'm just going to go to Q and add one more Z-sphere over here. Um, and so now I can rotate this whole thing. Maybe, uh, let me go back to rotate. Uh, nope. Can I? I can rotate this whole top part, but maybe by holding Alt. Nope. I think there was a way to uh, rotate the, the whole thing, but I, I'll, I can figure it out. Um, you know, I can always kind of bring it back to where it is. But um, this will be easy to uh, rotate the hips. Like the first thing that happens that is that these hips are open like this. So whenever you see um, the reference, and let me load that real quick. Um, Pubwise, thank you. Um, Let me uh, load this thing in for the reference. I'll bring it over. So here you can kind of see, you know, what the pose is. Like these parts are opened up, uh, and this is kind of towards the back. Um, so I'm going to try and get a pose like that. I mean, in, in most of the poses that I see this thing in, like it'd be nice to get a pose like this with it with like maybe a rock or something that it's. Uh, resting its leg on, but even looking at uh, the the drawings here, um, I can tell that, uh, you know, posing this thing uh, is going to not be, even Joe uh, Johnson didn't really pose it running. But it does run, and we've seen it uh, moving in the movie, so, uh, which is probably stop motion. So we can kind of maybe do this, uh, you know, like a little bit of a leg spread, and maybe so this moves this way. Uh, this is this does not move, right? So this does not rotate. This rotates. So let's do this. And another thing that happens is that this kind of bends down and this bends up accordingly, right? But the problem is that the whole thing, you know, uh, needs to rotate. So the head would kind of be tilted um, a little bit. So I'm going to try and see what I can do, maybe find some sort of compelling pose this way. Uh, and then to rotate the whole Z-Sphere rig, I'll just use the deformation uh, panel here. And uh, I think there's a rotate over here. And we want to rotate around Z. So that's already on. So you can kind of see here that we could do this type of a rotation just to kind of get an idea of what the um, poses. I just want to kind of get this on the floor, right? So we basically have the thing doing this. Um, 
I'm actually going to go all the way back to, um, I'm just using undo to do that. And we'll just add that one Z sphere over there. So another way to do this is instead of doing that, I can maybe rotate from here. So rotate the head from here. And I think there's a way to do this. And then for some reason, I've forgotten how to do it. Um, but yeah, basically what I want to do is maybe I can just rotate this way. Here we go. Right. So maybe the, the kind of the heads rotated this way. Uh, this one's out. This one is out as well. One is probably better to be out more than the other. I'm going to um, yeah, maybe do something like this. Right. And then um, maybe bring this one down a bit, rotate this one. And again, I just want to be flush with the floor, right, with the foot as much as I can. Um, so that's looking a little bit too extreme from this type of rotation. So when posing things, it's always good to be more subtle than be really, um, you know, to be really extreme. So I think something like this may be okay. So let's just bring everything back. And this kind of gives me an idea of how I want things to end up. Um, now it looks like maybe the feet could go down a bit more. I think this is fine. All right, so that's one option. Uh, let me go all the way back. And let's see if I can do another option here too. I just get to the point where I had that Z over there. Here we go. Um, so here I'm going to do the same thing, but this way I'm going to look through the model. So I can still see my Z sphere rig, and I'm going to look through the model just so I don't get as much of an extreme pose. So I'm just going to do a little bit of this, right, uh, for this leg, and then maybe the head will bend this way a little bit, right, and then uh, this one maybe it goes out a little bit as well, like so, but mostly stays put, okay. So I think that's kind of okay. I think that's too much of a bend for the head, maybe about that much. Okay, so that's good. Um, we're gonna kind of put this aside. We'll do the posing afterwards, and now we're gonna shift gears to painting. So I am going to move on from transparency to the object itself and move on to the painting part. Um, so I'm gonna select this piece right here which is the biggest piece. I don't know why it still wants to stay on the... Uh, it's not why, because I'm pressing two. I just want to go to the hall here. Uh, I did some work in naming stuff, by the way, uh, which, uh, you know, uh, is a good idea and organizing everything. So everything's organized in folders. I still do have a little bit of stuff here that uh, are... I, I'm going to move out at some point, but right now I'm just keeping them as part of the model. Okay, so, uh, all right, so back to painting. I'm going to sole out this piece. So we're going to paint this piece first. And um, for colors, I mean, I'm going to go ahead and um, I don't need to load a brush yet. I'm going to load uh, import the texture and um, I'm going to import it's kind of image that basically started this whole thing. And um, it's this one right here, which I'll add to that. So it's just this image. And I kind of like the colors in here. So I'm going to try and use them if I can. And I don't know if I even like the colors of the mechs, but I kind of like this gray outside. I think they're kind of cool colors, this kind of lightish gray and this darker gray and this darker gray. So I might use these colors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this painting as a color swatch. So I'm just going to, min I don't really need it to be very big. I'm just going to put it over here, kind of off to the side and press X to set it there. And then um, here, I'm just going to go ahead and start painting it. Now, uh, first of all, I want to coat this thing in one color, and that's going to be the color of the, the, the mech itself. So to pick that color, I'm just going to use this. Now notice here, I'm knocking the color as I move on to uh, <laughs> the canvas or even this thing the color here isn't changing uh, so to have it change i'm going to press the alt button and when i press the alt button it actually is going to pick up whatever's underneath the cursor so i'm thinking maybe 
this color right here would be a good one uh, for the whole thing. And if I look at this color, it's kind of a more of an orangish color, it looks like. It's not really a green color or gray color. Um, but, I mean, it is closer to the gray as, as I like. But I think I'm going to go for that. All right, and I'm going to fill the object with that color. Now, the color here is a little bit darker because of the lighting. So let me go see what's going on with the lighting in this scene. And for painting, you probably want to have as neutral as a light. So I've got one light intensity at 85, 0.85, and then let's add another one, and then have this one be at 0.25, which gives me at a, about a one of lighting. Um, and I'm using basic material two. I'm going to switch to basic material one. Um, actually, the better one to do for painting is, uh, where is it? Uh, skin Shade 4. Okay, so this kind of gives me more of a realistic color uh, of the object. Um, and um, also, let's kind of take a look at it and see what it looks like in a render. So I'm going to turn on, um, where are you? Redshift here. And uh, I'm just going to use the existing ZBrush material. I'm not going to go to Redshift material and see what that looks like rendered. Okay, so, um, and I'm just going to use these lights. Uh, this one's kind of towards the bottom. I'm going to move it up. Um, so I got a 0.25 and I've got a 0.85. And this should kind of be giving me the realistic color. So let's just go ahead and do a render, see what that comes out as. And I might uh, kind of lower my render settings here just so I can get faster renders, but I'm just going to let this first one go. Yeah, uh, Papa Wise, I'm doing still doing the um, ATSD, and I think either this time uh, and definitely next time it'll be done. Uh, maybe this time, you know, if we get through the painting part and the posing part today uh, and shoot off a render, I think I'm ready to stop there. Okay, so here we go. Um, so, I, you know, the reason why I did this is because, oh, <laughs> I've got... Uh, the BPR filters on. Let me go change those out. Um, I don't NPR and let's filters and set it to default. We'll get the default render. Here we go. Okay, so I, I, and this is a good thing that I did this because this is looking more beige and less gray. So I don't know if I'm going to use that color. So here I'm going to go and choose a, a gray color again, holding the Alt key. Um, Maybe let's try this lighter gray color. So again, it's pure gray kind of here. That's good. And so let's go ahead and fill the object with that and do another render. Now, before I do that, I'm going to change some render settings here just so it's a little bit faster. So this error threshold, I'm going to go to 0 0.05 here. And let's do a BPR render. And I could turn on progressive rendering because I don't really need the full render to kind of see the color of it, but this is fine. Um, now since I changed some settings here, it's going to take a little bit of time, but not too long. And this is a pretty dense part of the model. So there we go. I think this color looks good. Uh, I like this color a lot, so I'm going to go with that. Okay, so this is going to kind of be the base color of the, the Mac. Maybe a tad darker. Let's do that as well thing about painting is, is, is just like painting in real life. You basically are going to spend a lot of time kind of figuring out a palette and then, uh, and then painting away. Um, I usually do my painting in Substance Painter, uh, but uh, I also do it in ZBrush. I mean, for something like this, ZBrush is just fine. Okay, that's good enough right there. All right, so let's go ahead and start the painting job. So now I've got kind of the, the thing painted. Now the other thing I want to do um, is I want to remember this color uh, so I can use it. So I'm going to go ahead and um, you know put in some other object in here. Just you know uh, any 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 object doesn't matter. But uh, I'm going to go all the way to the top here and insert a cube or a plane. Plane's fine. And I'm going to move this plane to the side here. 
And I'm also going to move, it's to kind of put it in the hull folder. I don't want it there, I just want it outside like this. And this is going to be kind of my canvas. So I'm just going to fill this uh, object with RGB on. I'm going to fill it with this color that I have. And uh, just for kicks, I'm going to switch colors and see if it's uh, going to paint here. Okay, so yeah, this is fine. And then maybe I'll subdivide this thing a couple of times too. Okay, so here I've got this color. And then when I switch the color, I've got this one, which is the main color. Okay, so I've got a swatch of the main color and I've got this other color that was there before. I think it's the color of the canvas. Uh, so I just basically want to leave this here and visible and then go back to the hull. So I'm just going to unsolo that. Okay, so now what I want to do is... Um, um, so there's kind of two ways of thinking about this. You can uh, paint in dents and kind of wear and tear in the metal. Uh, I'm not going to assume this thing's like been in the field and is worn out or whatever. It's kind of a new one, newer uh, model. Uh, so this kind of would be the one that you start out with. And then um, afterwards, um, you can go in and, um, you know, uh, add in kind of the dents and, and whatnot. But here, what I do want to do is also, uh, you know, this thing's been outside or whatever, so it does have some weathering on it. So the first thing I want to do here is um, I'm going to um, do some masking. So I'm going to solo this thing out and I'm going to go to masking. And then I do a mask by cavity first. Let's do that. There it is. So this kind of masks all the little nooks and crannies, uh, which usually are, you know, a little bit dirtier uh, because when you clean something, you, you know, you have to really get in there to clean this area out. Um, and I'm going to uh, grow that mask. And then sharpen it. Right, so, and then I'm going to boost that mask, just kind of go outside of the lines of the inside part. So I'm just kind of boosting the mask, and then I'm also growing the mask, just kind of to get a bigger area, right, that goes outside. And then I'm also going to sharpen the mask as well, uh, just so I kind of know exactly where that is ending. Now, the um, mask here um, is really straight on the edges so I can either muck with the mask here and um, get it to have kind of more uh, frayed edges and whatnot or I could do that later um, I think I'm going to do that later with just the painting part so right now I'm just going to mask this part uh, and um, like so and um, I'm also going to bring up the Z color uh, this is really useful uh, this is a plugin that you get uh, for free with ZBrush uh, this is really useful because it's got this kind of thing in the bottom where you can actually change the hue and saturation and value. Um, and you can move this off screen, which is what I'm going to be doing, but I'll bring it back in if I'm talking about something important. Okay, so I've got this mask going on here, and what I want to do uh, is I want to go ahead and pick a little bit darker version of my color. And that's where um, this really comes in handy. So I'm going to invert the mask first. I'll just do it here in the menu. Um, so inverse... Right, so now all the other parts are masked, uh, and then the uh, the places that are kind of have indents are not. And then for this color here, um, which should be here, um, I want to increase, let's see, can I play with the value of this? Okay, I'm just going to say set color. That's not what I wanted to do. Um, and see, this is why, oh, let's see, did I hide that thing? I did not, but I'm on solo. Um, I guess I could always pick it from here. So I just want to pick this color. And I don't want to set the color, but I want to add it. Um, it's been a while since I've used this. I forget how to pick the color and put it in here. So let's do add. No, how did it work? Did you drive from here? Yeah, here we go. And again with the alt key. Oops. <clears throat> okay, I think this is the color. So here I can just kind of, I don't know what's happening, maybe. 
It's acting weird with this pen. Here we go. Just make it a little bit darker, like maybe like that, right? So for that, I'm just using the value here. And I'm just going to fill object. Um, oh, we need to set the color. So that sets it over here. And then just fill object with that. And if I clear the mask, this is kind of what I'm getting, right? So I can see here that um, the edges are really clean. And uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do another trick uh, with masking. I'm going to try and do as much of this as I can with just uh, using masking tricks. And uh, then I'm going to um, do physical painting afterwards. So here I'm just going to go back to uh, not light, but masking. And what I want to do here is do a mask uh, by peaks and valleys. And that gives me this kind of a thing, which, you know, is an interesting uh, damage type of look as well. And I am going to invert that mask. And that kind of has these areas. And here I'm just going to go and uh, let me pick even a little bit of a darker color here. I'm just going to go in with the paintbrush and um, <clears throat> let me go ahead and choose an alpha here so it doesn't look so... Uh, let me see if I can find a better alpha for this. Um, my alpha menu is going to take a minute here to uh, generate. So <clears throat> I don't, uh, if you could wait for a minute. Um, all right. Um, you, you can cr uh, create swatches and save them for a future palette. I mean, you could use that color tool to just basically um, do do that work or yeah you could you could create a create a, a swatch a palette and then use it as well um i don't know i, I think there might be different work i don't paint in zbrush as much as i sculpt and model so i don't really use that much of it uh, don't you know like i'm sure there's better workflows and whatnot uh, but yeah like the one i did was just a very simple thing that i always do which is uh <clears throat> just create a, a document, you know, like an area in the document where I put in colors that I want to continue to use. Uh, but you could do that in Photoshop beforehand too if you want to and then uh, and then just like this image. All right, so this is going to take a minute. Um, but yeah. <clears throat> All right, here we go. And then in these uh, alphas, I just want to find, uh, do I have one that's just, okay, bone, mechanical, fractals, uh, miscellaneous, NPR, patterns and grills. I think, you know, maybe I can use, uh, not a skin one, but um, let's see, there might be something in the Gnome and Alpha library here. That might work. <clears throat> I want something that's just kind of a broken up. Uh, and I should, I could use some of these uh, from brushes from Photoshop, but uh, I think these are more skin brushes, uh, alphas, so these aren't going to work. Let's see, Pixelogic alphas. Let's see if there's some in here. I see more of kind of what I'm looking for here. Here we go. Something maybe like this. Let's choose that. Okay, now the, the thing is when I do this, it's going to load it into... Um, Spotlight, which is not what I want. So what I need to do is hide Spotlight for the, for a minute and then just use that alpha that way. So same exact thing, but a little bit different step. I do need to find it. Maybe I'll find something better. Nope, there it is. Okay, I'll choose that. Let's see if there's any other ones that we could load so I could just switch to them without having to load this uh, menu. Um, Let's see, I'm just looking for kind of like edge scratch. Here we go. There were a few good ones over here. Uh, something like this, something like this, something like this. Um, yeah, and I should say that painting in, in ZBrush is great. Um, it's really, really cool. And right now I'm, I'm just creating one um, map, which is going to be kind of the color map. And I'm not really doing, um, separating this out. I haven't UV'd. Uh, any of the parts, so I'm not really going to go down that route. Pick this one too. 
there are some great ones. And by the way, all these you can get from the Pixelogic website, and they're free. Um, so you go to, um, you know, if you do, I'm sorry, I keep saying Pixelogic, but the ZBrush website. Um, and uh, if anybody's interested, I can dig for the link. But it, they're easy, pretty easy to find. I'm going to use this one too. All right, so now that I've got all these alphas loaded up, um, I can go in and see now if I paint. Um, turn off symmetry, first of all. And we don't need to have these be symmetric. And uh, and here, I'm actually, dots is putting too many of them. So I'm just going to use drag rectangle and just do, oh, let's put it in the patterns. I'm going to make alpha with this and texture. And just, you can kind of see what I'm doing here, where I'm just um, adding these kind of along the edges. Like so. And then um, if I hide the mask, so if I have the... Um, if I just click on view map, it shows me what it ju I, I just did. Um, and that's actually not looking like what I want it to. So I'm going to undo that. And I think what I want to do is go the other way around. And I want to pick this inside color. I'm going to switch these colors. There we go. So now basically what I'm doing is the edges of these things, I'm just kind of putting this pattern down just to show a little bit of wear and tear. Like that. And I'm focusing on areas where I know the eyes are going to go to a lot. And by the way, I can do this without the mask being on. So one of the things I'm noticing here is that the mask has a border. So I'm actually going to be brave enough not to do this with the mask. I'm just going to um, bring this back and um, do this. Flip the mask and fill it with um, the dark color. And then I'm gonna remove the mask like that. And that kind of has given me already a lot of things that I want. So I'm gonna pick this color and start kind of, here we go. This is what I want it to do. So you guys can see here that all of a sudden it kind of looks like, you know, this stuff is kind of dirty. They cleaned the outside part, but you know, the inside part's kind of still not uh, not getting clean. And here I'm just going to go and see what um, drag, not drag dot, but um, dots will do. So it's doing a little bit of what I want. So this is good. Um, Would it make sense to color the larger surfaces and then go to the linear separations? Um, I don't really need to do that much on the lighter surface, but yeah, I mean, you know, there, there are different ways. Painting is one of those things where, you know, it, if it makes sense to you, definitely go by that way. Uh, do it that way. I'm just kind of, uh, let me see what spray painting will do to this, but I don't want color uh, shifts. So I'm just gonna say color down to, just one color, that's working even better. So here you can see I'm not really, you know, uh, doing a lot of, you know, painting. I'm just kind of doing a little bit of weathering just to kind of give this thing the idea that it's been through some, some stuff. Uh, now the problem with the um, peaks and valleys is it also did the peaks. So here, the peaks are kind of getting, you know, the peaks usually don't have this kind of darkening of the color. So 
I'm going to have to paint over them. But this goes pretty fast. And it's one of those things where, just like UVing, you just put some music on. And, and even though this might kind of look a bit busy right now it uh, when you bring everything else back and maybe it might help to do it this way you can kind of see how it's already taking a lot of character um, <clears throat> I don't know why I decided to have a scarf on it's really hot uh, all right and then just uh, start painting this stuff over here but yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, there are workflows and you can use some of my workflows if you like them. But uh, basically, you can kind of get an idea of how like this is, you know, this area is here becoming a little bit more like real and weathered. All right. And always, it's always a good idea to see what it's going to look like rendered. So let's do a quick render here again in Redshift. Um, see how these are coming through. And with a lot of these uh, parts here, I could probably just leave them the way they are. But um, <clears throat> yeah, if I if I do um, paint them, if I do uh, work on them, they they definitely will will show. All right. All right. Um, let's see. I have my error threshold at 0 0.05. I might bump this up a little bit more. Uh, and also, I might um, turn on progressive rendering, which will make this a little bit faster. Uh, but yeah, let's just let it do its thing right now. Here we go. Uh, Ender was your favorite place, yeah? Um, yeah, and Andor was, uh, Andor was an interesting, uh, episode. And there was one of these chasing the Ewoks and then Chewbacca got one of them. Yeah, it, it's, it, you know, this thing's been in Star Wars quite a bit. And then it came back in The Mandalorian, I think, and some pirates had one. So, all right, here we go. I don't know why this render is taking so long, probably because I have so many parts and it's a close-up. But uh, I'm really curious to see how this uh, is going to come out. Yeah, I'm going to raise that uh, render threshold a bit, error threshold a bit, uh, see if I can get a faster render. I'm going to press escape here just because I don't want to wait. And um, I'm going to pump this up to 0.3. Let's try that. Let's see if that is a little bit faster. Oh, one other thing I wanted to do was turn on progressive. Here we go. BPR. And I think this kind of will give me an idea a lot sooner without getting a fuel. You know, I don't need a perfect render every time. I think the reason why it's taking such a long time is because a lot of these parts are very... Uh, here we go. That's actually not bad. Um, yeah, that render is coming across really nice. Um, yeah, it's doing the progressive render. I mean, I do see the noise here. It'd be cool if they added a denoiser. I think they probably will at some point. But uh, yeah, this is looking really, really good in the render. And here we go. There's the entire render. And uh, so, yeah, I think it is it is kind of translating over well. All right, so here um, I, I noticed that these are all going in kind of one direction. So here I'm just kind of changing the direction a little bit. Now, the other thing I can also do here is the uh, RGB intensity is at 100. Uh, no, I think that's good. I can probably increase the flow a little bit um, just to get a little bit more... Um, Paint to drop. Yep, that's working good. So yeah, I can see the little bit of stuff on the back, but I can also see the stuff in the front. And that's working out okay. And I just need to just hit this. Here 
irregularly. And I'm going to just use this alpha and go through the entire part of this model and then uh, come back with another alpha and just go over the parts a little bit more and that adds a little bit more irregularities. Now Substance Designer does a lot of the stuff automatically with smart materials. Um, and it does a good job, but I find myself going in afterwards and tweaking it a little bit just to kind of add that more of a, you know, human touch versus a machine generated uh, touch. So, yeah. Um, Well, um, if you're a 2D artist, um, then that's great. And uh, if you want to watch the rest, it's going to be on um, YouTube. So you can go watch the rest if you want, if you uh, don't want to watch it live, but have it on while you're doing something else, uh, which is how I watch most of everything nowadays. All right. I know a lot of this kind of seems repetitive for a stream, but I think uh, it's just part of the process. And if you guys don't want me to do it on online, I can always do this uh, off camera. But I think it's super useful. Now what also is not as good in this case is if you pick the other color, the darker color, and then go over what you did just a little bit with the darker color and spill out. And that kind of creates a little bit more of a a realistic look as well. And it's kind of funny because I used this method a long time ago using, um, there was a 3D paint package that came with uh, Cinema 4D uh, before, before they bought ZBrush. I don't know what it was called, like Express Paint or something like that. Um, and uh, I think I need it's about time to jump to where did the alphas go oh are they all textures they are all textures no they're not where did they, oh i guess i didn't load oh, that sucks all right um i'll just go in and load these up here we go i guess it's going to load these as uh not alphas but as textures but here i'll just go in and say make alpha all right and then let's pick a few more Um, I, forget, I forget what it was called. If anybody remembers, uh, that would be great. If you could remind me, it's called Speed Paint or some something like that. Some other kind of deep paint, something paint. And it was just a 3D paint program. And they, you know, I think Maxon bought them a while back and incorporated it into Cinema 4D. I think it might still even be there. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on it, but um, yeah. And sometimes it's good to have like these types of things too, just because they add a little bit more of a. Um, there we go, and make alpha. So basically what's happening is that a lot of these images, um, I think, are uh, have alphas in them or whatever, but it's loading them up as, uh, you know, as uh, textures. And then I'm just going in and saying make alpha. Um, there's some really good ones here. All right, so make alpha as well. And you can see the alphas are kind of loading up. Hopefully, let's see, are they all there? Yep, they are. Okay. Let's get a couple more. I know I did this before, but one more time for the win. Kind of like this one. Make alpha and turn these off. Put this away. All right, here we go. Back on track. All right. Okay, so here I'm just picking a, this different alpha and painting with it. Um, but you can see here I'm getting kind of a different effect. Let's see uh, if I can make the scale here is one, color is zero, placement. Maybe, you know, do this so it's kind of all over the place. Something like that. Okay. 
and this will create kind of an interesting look. And I'm going to go with the darker color again. And here I'm just going to put some on the edge over here because it didn't really know to mask the edge of this thing. So I'm going to do that manually. Okay, and what I'm going to do is pick this other color. So if I hold Alt down, I place the darker color. And if I don't, I place the lighter color. So now I can basically do this whole thing uh, just by holding down the Alt key. Right, so. so you can automatically see that I'm getting something that's looking a little bit more real. Just by going back and forth with this texture. Yeah, I really like what's going on over here. Now in this nook over here, oops. I'm going to go in and pick a very dark color. So now I have these two on the object. I can pick from the object as well. But I'm going to go to the darker color here and uh, um, make it a little bit darker. And I'm going to pick that thin piece that I had, this one. inside part really dark right and then just hit the border back there we go all right so now uh, what I want to do is um, let's go ahead and and the nice thing is I've got a lot of really cool uh, paint brushes as well so if I go to brush here and I might go to my brush menu, which is masking brushes, painting brushes. I've got a bunch of different painting brushes here. Some I've bought, some I've, I've had from before. Um, so like a soft bristle brush or a, a short a feather brush or whatever. Um, I've got an airbrush as well, feathered paint. Um, let's see what this looks like. Kind of liking what this is doing. I know you can so sometimes barely see what I'm doing, but uh, it's basically using the streak uh, function just to kind of create more of a organic looking brush. And this works really good big. Like you can see what's what it's doing over in that area. Too much. All right, let's pick this other brush. I like this one a lot. Let's draw a brush. And this one's kind of good to just, you know, get this kind of action happening. But let's try it with an alpha. Nope, it's too strong. So let's go back to the paintbrush. hit that area with that. So, you know, this kind of big part that I'm working on is one of the most important parts. Uh, so I'm spending a little bit more time there. I don't know if I'm going to spend this much time on the rest of the model. But you can see these kinds of things take their time to do, and they're fun. And it's not going to be a lot of, you know, tips and tricks today. Uh, maybe you'll, you'll get a, a, a tip or a trick here and there, but mostly it's just going to be me doing this. So, um, 
maybe with some other types of colors and whatnot. Now, the thing that, that would be nice, it, like, and I can do it, I can also add materials to this as well, uh, but I don't really know how that's going to come out. So I'm not going to um, do that. But it'd be cool, like, if you could paint materials. I mean, you can, but... Um, But I don't know how that would translate over. Right, so you can kind of see it's getting more and more organic looking as I apply these paint strokes. All right. Let's take a look at it from the top here. I'm going to slam a camera on this. Let's see. I guess I should have perspective. No, I guess it's fine. But sometimes if you work on an area like this area, I know I'm going to be working on a lot. You can always add a camera to it. Or um, you can use the timeline to um, basically set an angle and just come back to it afterwards. All right, I'm going to pick the darker color now. And I think it's this one right here. And accentuate some of these borders. So now here it looks like this thing's been walked on and and whatnot. And again, I don't really want it to be too weathered, but uh, enough of a, of a weathering where it looks used. So there's more kind of stuff going on here than the outside part, which has some, but not a lot. And now I'm just going to do the same thing with the lighter color. And uh, I, don't, I don't know if this is coming through in the stream, uh, but it's kind of a little bit of a variety in, in what's going on. And here I'm just going to pick a darker color. Um, And go to the paintbrush here. It's kind of a harsher. I'll use this one. And uh, I'm just going to do this over here. And then. Um, beat it back because there's like oils and stuff that gets spilled over here so here we go all right and this alpha worked out really well let's see what this one does it's always good to switch out your alphas so you're not kind of you know so people can't recognize the same pattern over and over again but here we go that kind of made it look good and again if you look at it from here it kind of you know it's very subtle uh, i just want to make sure that there isn't any areas where it's like glaring um, but i don't think so Inside here will probably be darker, so I'm just going to darken that area out and lighten this one. There are some pretty powerful painting capabilities in ZBrush. Um, it's not really known for that but you can do some seriously good painting in ZBrush. All right, I think that'll do it for that part. Okay, so um, now I want to move on to, uh, let's say these, let's do these windows. Okay, so the windows have their own color. I'm just going to pick a color uh, here. And um, let me sew these things out. Uh, okay, we're just working on this piece. And um, Relax. Relax. 
Uh oh, got a dog drama outside. And here I'm just kind of hitting it with the lighter color just a little bit on this. All right. Full on social drama going on outside. All right, so that looks good like that. Um, this is what got turned on. Okay, so, uh, all right, so this is looking good. Now here I can kind of take some freedoms and uh, paint certain parts. So here I'm gonna go back to my brush here, pick the lighter color, that works. So maybe this top part here is the lighter color. And then also kind of had the idea that these would be little things that the, the guys could look through. So I'm just going to pick a darker color and just go in here and do that. Right, and then do this just to kind of beat it back. That works okay. I kind of like these top parts darker, so I'm going to. Um, Go back to my paintbrush and paint them the darker color. Here we go. And also, while I'm at it, I'm going to go back, back out here and put a little bit more of a border around this. So you can kind of see already how this is looking a lot cooler and more realistic. All right, that works right there. Okay, so these windows are done. All right, what about these metal bars up here? I think those could be cool if they were filled with the lighter color, but also had some of this weathering Okay, so these are pretty low res. Oh, it's one bar. Okay, and it's probably like not subdivided at all. So here, let's subdivide this a few times. So it would hold some paint. And again, I don't need it to hold too much paint, but a little bit. Just to kill that kind of separation between the two pieces. And you can see here that the color kind of is really strong. And that's because um, this thing doesn't have enough subdivision levels. I could turn on Sculptress mode and uh, and kind of subdivide where I'm putting the paint down, but that's fine. It's actually is working okay. All right. So that looks pretty good. Just wanna get the There. All right, so those look integrated. Now, 
What's going on here is that the inside part is really light. So it's kind of blending in and I don't want that to happen. So I need to color the inside parts here darker. There we go, and that'll make it pop out more. And just so these are visible, I think there would be some sort of marking or something on it. So for that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into drag rectangle and I'm just going to pick like a square alpha and pick like an orange color. And on these guys, like create some sort of a thing that will tell somebody just not to step on them. So since this is a lighter color, it'll probably be a darker color. So let's just pick darker color like so. Okay. And I'm going to mirror this just because it's going to happen on both sides. Like so. I wonder if this color is good, red. Maybe put a yellow thing in the middle of it. Let me choose a different alpha here. I think I'm going to go out to the alpha library that ZBrush has, this one, and there'll be a thin, long thing. Here we go. Let's try doing something like this. Too much. I think it's good the way it is. I think I'm just gonna leave it at that. Maybe make it darker and maybe let's try and see if this works. One last try here. You can still see the kind of the stair stepping here and that's because again the there's enough subdivision levels on this thing. <clears throat> and there you know it's uh, I can zero mesh it. Let me try doing that real quick. Zero mesh it at the same. Maybe that might give me a little bit better. Um, if you guys don't mind, just one second, I need to text my neighbor. Oh, what happened in the meantime? Something, okay, I, I think, oh, it, it did do the, um, it did do the zero mesh. So let's see what that, but it just colored it all this color, which is fine. Um, I'm just going to fill it with this and then see if I can, uh, do this. Here we go. This kind of is cool. It kind of indicates, you know, like, hey, careful, don't trip on this. Not that they can step over there because there's a barrier, but still. Um, this might work. And then uh, just go in here with some paint and <clears throat> back to dots, pick one of these alphas. Um, this one, 
and just roughen it up a bit. Here we go. All right, so that just kind of creates a thing where it says, you know, make sure you don't step on this or whatever. And uh, <clears throat> I don't need it to be that prominent, but I can kind of maybe hit it a bit with this. Like so. Okay, I think that's good enough. All right, so let's see what else I can do here. I think I'm good for this part. So let's now go to, um, how about this part right here? So for this part, I added some surface noise as well. And let's see what kind of, um, what kind of paint it would take. So this one, uh, let's see here. Yeah, I'm gonna fill it with whatever color it is. So fill object. I kind of like this grayish color for it, so it's good. And uh, then I'm just going to pick maybe this kind of color, and which is a little bit lighter version of it. <laughs> you know, I could do the masking thing again too. Let's try that. So here, uh, let's do mask by. Um, Depth again, or max, max, uh, not depth, but now mass by cavity. All right, so that gave me a little bit of stuff. And I'm going to solo this out so I can see it. There it is. And what I want to do again is blur this mask, grow it, and then sharpen it, boost it, blur it, boost it, dilute it a bit. Grow it, shrink it. All right, so that kind of is giving me this type of a thing. All right, and then what I'm going to do here is just invert that mask. And then uh, switch colors here and fill object with that darker color. And then uh, switch these colors again and clear the mask. Oh, didn't do it. Um, switch color, fill object. And then s switch color again. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. Uh, is it masked? No. Okay, can I color this? I can. So let me pick a darker color then. <clears throat> I guess that's kind of what I wasn't doing. Um, switch color and then pick a little bit of a darker color like so. Fill object, here we go, and then clear the mask. Okay, so that kind of gave me that little bit of a, a darker color here, and actually that came out really nice. Um, it's gonna save me a lot of time. All right, and then uh, similarly here, I'm just going to go in with that darker color, maybe a little bit darker even. Here we go, clear that mask. Yeah, that looks good. And then let me uh, pick this color and switch these colors and start painting. I did see that there was a question. I'll get to it in just a minute. Oh, I'm in the inflate brush. How did that even happen? Okay, let's go to paint. Right, here we go. And um, let me choose a different alpha here. Let's choose... Um, this one and I think I do have symmetry on here yeah I do I'm gonna keep symmetry on for now and then I'll turn it off in a bit just to kind of get some of the areas that are common and the inside part of this would be fine I choose doing paint. Okay. And again, it's kind of nice to see the entire model while you're doing this, just because you don't want to be mucking around in areas where nobody's going to see it if they're occluded or whatever. 
All right, so just a little bit of paint. And now you can see I've added a surface noise to this area too, which kind of gives it a little bit more character, like so. And here I'm doing both the adding and subtracting. Um, what is the boost mask feature? Um, so good question. Um, and I'll answer it in just a minute. Let me just finish this kind of process here while I'm in the zone and then I'll answer that question. Again, you always want your borders to kind of have a little bit of this kind of darker color just because it's occluded and dust and stuff kind of gathers in there. Um, and while I'm thinking about it, I'm going to go back to this guy over here, pick its colors, so the lighter and the darker color, and darken these areas as well. All right, so let's see what a render of this looks like just for kicks, and then I can um, look through um, go progressive rendering and it's going pretty fast I kind of like what it's looking like so we're good um, one thing I'd like to add to this is a little bit of streaks so I'm gonna do that next it's because when it gets washed or whatever I mean there's a little bit of it here but it'd be cool if I had some more of it so let's see if I've got an alpha that has streaks in it uh, so I'm gonna go back to my alphas here, go to the Pixelogic alphas, and let's see if they have a Paint Streaks one. And these kinds of um, alphas you can find all over the internet. I'm just looking at an edge where there's like, you know, paint kind of dripping down. Here we go, this one. Right here, it was perfect. Right here, this is it. So I'm gonna pick that, make an alpha out of it. And the alpha is pointing in the wrong direction in my case. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and go to the alpha directory and, or, and flip this in V, and this is what I want. So now, it's kind of a shame that nobody does these uh, streams with painting, uh, so I'm kind of glad I'm doing it. So I'm just going to do this with a drag rectangle, and I'm going to choose a darker color, like maybe this one right here. and. I'm going to drag this out so you can kind of see what's going on here, like this. Okay, so I don't want that everywhere, so I'm just going to mask some of these areas. But I want, don't want this to go, and then just do the... There we go. That's a bit too kind of angled. I don't know why that happened, but okay, maybe do something like this. Actually, I'm going to start this all the way from the top. I'm going to mask more of this area. Actually, do it this way. So I'm just going to bulk mask some of the areas I don't want this to happen in like that keep hitting this preview I'm gonna make that pretty small because I don't really need to see the outline uh, I'm past the design stage where that matters okay there that's that's good and then now uh, oops did I move off of paint I did 
All right, and uh, let's do that now. All right, maybe something like this. And then I can just go in with, again, the uh, spray and the old alphas that I had. Let's do this one for now. And I can just kind of beat back some of this area. So I'm getting a few streaks here. I guess I could just done it manually. Uh, but it kind of, you know, it, it's kind of giving me the effect that I want over here. And um, to do this manually, I can just kind of you know, accentuate some of these. streaks like so. There we go. And I'm going to do the same thing up here to these windows. I have to pick a darker color. Just, just a little bit of spillage. It's happening. I could use that alpha too, but I think this is fine. Okay, so this is good enough. Um, like, why is the paint not applying it? Seems up to All right, here we go. Again, you want to be pretty subtle with this if you can. All right, here we go. All right, that's done. Let's move back to this piece right here. Oh, um, Um, yeah, I mean, this is, you know, interesting that you say that. Um, these tricks are all, um, I've learned all these tricks from painting plastic models. Um, and, you know, uh, from people that actually paint statues. So, um, yeah. Um, all right, so let's talk about Boost Mask because somebody was asking. All right, so for that, I'll just kind of switch to something like this and uh, initialize it as a cube. Initialize Q cube two by two, and let's divide that a few times. You know, let's just get this marshmallow. Okay, so here, um, what I'm going to do is, um, let's say I'm going to mask an area, like so, right? So basically, what that does, and I'll just turn on polyframe for a minute, um, and also remove the fill, so you can kind of see. Okay, so um, this shows you the grid underneath and what the mask is doing. Okay, so if I go in here into the masking menu and grow this mask, that's just going to grow it out. Uh, and you can see the edges are blurred, right? They're blurry edges. And then if I say sharpen, it's going to sharpen those edges. But see, the sharper I get, if I don't have enough subdivision levels, I'm going to get that stair-stepping. So if I divide this a couple more times and mask it, right and if I sharpen the mask then I will get a sharper mask and if I keep sharpening it now that mask is pretty sharp that's because I've got a lot of geometry now the boost mask what that will do here um, um, so let's say that there are uh, vertexes that are vertices that are not completely masked um, so I mean, even when I said sharpen it, you can kind of see that there's a gradient here, right? Um, like there are some areas that are masked and some areas that are not, and there's an in-between. But if I boost that mask, right, it's going to have less and less and less of that gradient, right? It's going to be more kind of just very sharp masking from one area to the next. And if I dilute it, then basically that's going to do the opposite. Um, OK, 
Okay, so if I do this, then only the points that were masked would be masked. And I think um, these kind of come in handy when you're um, doing... Um, there, there was They added these when they added a certain feature, and I kind of forget what it was for. Um, let me see here. Um, Yeah, I think that's what it is. I think it just basically makes it harsher. Uh, so um, sharper, I guess, let me let me do it this way. So let's say I mask something like this. Okay, so you see that there's kind of uh, soft edges around here. Now, if I grow this mask, it just grows that gradient on the side. Um, but if I... Um, boost the mask, you can see that the entire mask is going growing out, right? So it's not creating a blurred border, just the mask is getting bigger. And if I dilute the mask, then it's growing shorter. But both with diluting and boosting, I'm getting sharper edges, right? Uh, whereas if I grow the mask, it's going to grow it but get a blurred edge. And if I sharpen the mask, it's going to take that blurred edge and make it sharper. Right, but it's not growing it and shrinking it. So boost mask is kind of making the mask itself bigger. So now here it's not really doing anything because I don't have any blurred edges. But if I blur this mask, so here I'm just going to go uh, to um, uh, where is it? Blur uh, mask, blur mask right here. So I'm just going to blur it. Right, there's an edge to that blur. And if I boost the mask, it's just going to go to the edge of that blur and make it all completely masked. So the blur went all the way out to here, right, is what was happening before. So you can kind of see that blur effect be there. So um, here I'll just go back to my original mask. Like, let's say I've got this and I'm going to boost this mask. Oh, I'm sorry, dil uh, dilute it. So it's just basically this. So now I've got no blurry edges whatsoever, right? <clears throat> And if I start growing this mask, it's going to add blurred edges. But if I boost this mask, it's not going to do anything at all. Go back to this. Right, Boosting the mask is now actually just adding a little bit of, of gradient. And then if I dilute it, it's going to take whatever that gradient was, average it out, and give me this sharp edge. So it's kind of a way to grow and shrink your mask. Uh, but um, without blurring the edges or uh, sharpening or by not sharpening but um, kind of getting rid of the, the blurred edges right so you can kind of see I've got a nice pattern over here and if I want to pull that out I can do that like so I'll just hit that a little bit a little bit of a smooth brush and I can get a nice pattern out of it um, so yeah um, you know, a lot of these uh, masking things here are pretty neat. And Mask by Feature is really nice, too. Uh, and they just added that in 2023, which is basically... Um, you look at your object, you say Mask by Feature, or you can just say... I think there's another thing here that analyzes it, which is uh, Mask by... Yeah, we're doing it by border groups or crease. No, this isn't it. Where is the new masking stuff that they added? Uh, mask by region, this is it. So here, it, I just want to analyze the region and auto mask. So now it basically thinks it's the outside, but if I do auto region, it just knows that that's the area I want to mask, uh, which is kind of weird. If I just do a little bit of uh, masking on the inside here and say auto region, nope, auto region, but mask by region, analyze region and mask. Yeah, I don't know why it gets here. I'll just do it this way. Here we go. In auto region, it'll mask the inside part, right? So um, it's pretty useful for like if you're going to do a shape and you draw it out and you just want the inside part of it to be masked. Let's do that and it'll mask the inside. Um, <clears throat> all right. So hopefully that kind of gave you an idea of what that does. And I'm going to delete the subtool, go back to painting, uh, delete. OK, there it is. F. Go back to my object here, turn off polyframe. So now we were working on this part right here. 
and um, I'm going to add a little bit more variations to the paint here. So let's just pick the two colors that we had. And I'm going to hit this corner with the darker color. Right, and uh, again, this is looking a little bit formulaic, so I want to turn off symmetry and uh, do some uh, kind of more intense uh, alphas. And this is really kind of good because it adds like some streaking to whatever I'm working on. Um, you know, it, it there is a little bit of talent in there, um, RM, but also a lot of it is work. It's a lot of it is just experience and work. Um, I was talking to Ian from uh, Maxon the other day, and he had a good word for it. It's just it's hours behind the wheel, he said, and I think that's a great way to explain it. I've been using ZBrush since 2005, so it kind of gives you an idea of how long I've been doing this. And I wasn't that good then. <laughs> I uh, would look at my teachers and be very kind of um, impressed by the kind of work that they're doing, but I was nowhere near doing this kind of work. And over time, you know, uh, over many projects, you get better and better and better. All right, so that's good. Now let's move on to these top parts. And these top parts I'm going to actually fill with the darker color. And I'm going to lighten them up just by hitting them with this kind of thing. And again, turn off symmetry. And do that. Okay, so now it's kind of getting a little bit more um, like this. This kind of part looks really organic. Um, I want to do these uh, different parts as well. Um, so this one over here, I'm going to fill with the darker color, switch color, fill object. I wonder if the darker color looks better or the lighter color. I think the lighter color looks better. And let's see if this piece has enough geometry to hold paint. It's not bad. So here I'm just kind of adding a little bit of color here. And turn off symmetry. And then fight that color back off. I think the streak one is kind of not a good one. I'm using that a lot. Maybe use this one instead. And again, I can use that same trick that I had with masking. I'm going to turn this plane off for now. Another thing I'm also going to do, which is kind of bugging me, is pick these guys here and paint them this color. Because they are, actually, paint them this color. There we go. And I think those pieces probably need to be divided up. And they're cat pieces, so I might need to... Um, do something to them to uh, get them to be um, look at this There we go. You 
And these pieces are, if I look at the geometry, they're kind of from my kit bash library. So I can see that there really is no subdivision to these. And uh, what I might do just to kind of get some even geometry on there is just zero mesh them. Um, so I'm going to do that right now. I'm just going to go here to zero mesh. And I'm going to use uh, detect edges because they're hard surface. And I'm also going to say um, double the amount. I just want a lot of geometry. Yeah, actually, that's not bad. Uh, one other thing here. Yeah, symmetry is on. All right, let's do one more. And one more. Okay, there we go. And the, this is good enough. I mean, it, they're really small pieces. So it's not really going to show. Um, <clears throat> I don't know why these inside parts are so straight. But um, maybe I'll just leave it at this and just subdivide it a few times. Here we go. All right, that works. And then let's see what paint looks like on this. All right, let's just fill it. <coughs> I'm going to fill this up with uh, a color, fill object. And then let's see what the other color will do to it. Um, it's it's holding it. It's fine. Um, here we go. Um, all right. Let's see. Um, yeah, practice, practice. That's right. Yeah. Well, it's not practice. It's just work. It's just you got to work on stuff. So you know. I mean, if you you know, work projects will do wonders because you're under the gun to get stuff done early and on time. Um, and also, um, you know, if you're if you're not working somewhere, if you do a personal project like these streams or whatever, you know, every time I do a stream, I learn something as well. Uh, so, um, yeah, definitely, you know, uh, make opportunities for yourself to do uh, more and more work. Um, you see a smiling face. Yep. I mean, that's the idea. You definitely want, yeah, this, this thing right here. Uh, this will go away once the lights are there. I think that'll take that uh, feature away. But yeah, I see what you're saying. Um, is that wheel an add-on? No, Zach Max, that wheel is a Wacom thing. So this thing is part of the Wacom uh, tablet. So in the Wacom settings, it's basically using this thing uh, called on-screen shortcuts. And it's using this kind of wheel. So I made one for ZBrush. And all basically all that it's doing is just uh, doing keystrokes for hotkeys that I have. So if you like working with hotkeys, you can use hotkeys. I just kind of like having a little menu on my screen. Um, all right, where were we? Yeah, we were doing these handles. They look a lot better. Let's pick this thing on top here and fill it with the lighter color. There we go. And I think this thing is not very, oh no, it's got enough geometry. I think one level of subdivision will do it. Is it dynamic? It is. So let's do one more. Um, let's see what kind of paint it will hold. So I'm going to solo it and let's see. Yeah, it's fine. Think it'll be okay. Like that. Yeah, I've watched a lot of people like do paintings of um, collectibles and whatnot, and uh, have learned a lot of these techniques from them. Of course, you know, they don't have symmetry. They don't have a lot of the, you know, kind of the things that I take for granted. But um, but on that, it's it's basically the same stuff. I don't want to choose this thing and fill it with the lighter color here. Fill object and pick this, fill it as well. Now, this piece here is not mine. I used it from a kit bash library, so uh, it's going to have some interesting uh, experimentation going on with it. First thing I notice is it's too big, so I'm going to make it smaller. Second thing I noticed is that 
Oh. Why is this thing underneath it more oval shaped? That's weird. All right, let's make this match it. Here we go. All right, that's better. All right, so that's looking pretty good. Let's work on these pieces. So I'm going to pick this one, and I don't know if this one has, I guess it does have, let me see here. So this one's a pretty nicely kind of organized model. I might need to add some more subdivisions to it, so I'm just going to divide it a few times. And I think that should do enough to get it to hold the paint. No, the paint's kind of coming in blotchy, but I think it's kind of enough to get it to do what I want it to do. I mean, I could subdivide it a few more times. It's pretty low poly geometry. All right, I'm just kind of trying to get that corner. I'm going to sole this out and I'm going to um, do this kind of underneath. So it's a bit independent of it. Okay, there we go. That looks much, much better. And sole it out. Here we go. All right. Okay, that's good. Let's move on to this piece. So it's just kind of, you know, this rinse and repeat of, of this process. Um, I don't know if this one's full. Let's fill it and let's see. Okay, so this is another scenario where it's, uh, you know, got good geometry. So what I'm going to do is apply the dynamic subdivision and uh, see what kind of paint that holds. Not bad. And I'm going to do the masking thing with this. So I'm just going to solo it out. And I'm going to do the masking, mask by cavity. <clears throat> Perfect. I mean, it's just really beautiful how it gets all that stuff. Okay, and I'm going to uh, blur the mask. So go out, boost it. So okay, it creates this kind of effect. Right, and then I'm going to sharpen it and then dilute it a bit and shrink it some shrink mask. Where is it? Shrink it a bit. All right, that's good. And then I'm going to invert that mask and then fill um, object, switch color, remove the mask. And this is kind of what I get, which is a good start. And then I can just go in and uh, touch it up see what that looks like with the whole thing. And, uh, yeah, pretty neat. Um, which Wacom am I using? I'm using the Intuos Medium. And um, that's kind of been my workhorse tablet, but I also have a Cintiq that I use every once in a while, especially if I'm doing work, because it's one of those that's a computer and a tablet. So if I'm somewhere, I just take that with me. If they don't have a machine for me, I just use that. Um, but I also uh, use some of the Sense Labs uh, tablets every once in a while. Um, that's XE. And, you know, X-E-S, I don't know how it's smelled, but, it's, but it starts with an X, but it's Sense Labs. You know, it's, it's so funny because, <laughs> because um, people always mistake the, the Wacom name. Like, there's always people, you know, don't know that it's called Wacom. So you see a lot of people call it Wacom and... Uh, all that stuff, but the correct pronunciation for those of you that give a shit 
um, is Wacom. And, um, but it, you know, it was a while until, you know, I kind of knew exactly how to spell it. And now it's, you know, with Sense Labs, it's the same thing. Like you got to kind of, you know, at first I was like, Zense Labs, is this like a, a, a different, you know, is this a, uh, you know, maybe a foreign company or something? It means something. And they're like, no, no, it's Sense. And I'm like, oh, okay. That makes sense. <laughs> uh, all right. Sorry, Sense Labs. I love your stuff. Um, but yeah, but I've been using Wacom stuff, uh, Wacom tablets, f like for ages, like before '95, uh, on Windows for pens and other technologies. I've I've known the company and worked with them for a long time, um, and I know a lot of the people from Sense Labs as well. A lot of them came from Wacom, so. It's good to that there, there's good competition out there. All right, so here I'm just kind of doing the same thing with the other thing. I'm kind of coloring the, these a little bit darker, um, but I'm kind of messing up some of my weathering, so I need to go in and re add them. Maybe not with this brush though. Yeah, that brush was really harsh. This one's kind of more weathery. So here we go. All um, Yeah, but you definitely want to use a tablet uh, with ZBrush. You definitely, definitely want to use a tablet. Um, I mean, I know some people that use it with a mouse, and I always kind of bow to them and respect. But I personally um, like using using the tablet, and I think most people in you know in the industry or most of the people that are kind of doing this as work use tablets. Schools teach it with tablets. Um, That's weird. I thought I colored this the darker color. Let's try this again. All right. I mean, ideally, I'd make these glass or whatever, but they're so tiny and they're probably in the grand scheme of things, they're not going to show up. Okay, so this top part is starting to look really, really good. I'm happy with it. Um, Let's move on to the next. I think, how are we doing on time? We're doing good. Well, how did I turn radial symmetry on? Let's go to over to here. All right. So there's this. I'm going to fill this with this color. I think this was the darker color. So I'll switch color, fill object. So, uh, okay. And not this dark of a color, but this color right here. Pill object, yeah, here we go. Okay, and then I'm going to sew this out and do the masking stuff with it. Um, it's not going to matter as much, but I'll just do it anyway. Mask by cavity, invert the mask, and I'm going to switch color here. Fill object, switch color, go to that. So that kind of created this look, which over the grand scheme of things, it's not, it's not really doing much. Kind of did a little bit of stuff there. You know, most of this is not seen anyway, so it's good. Um, and then I'll just go in and uh, with uh, the alpha, maybe do a little bit of this stuff. And then pick the darker color. Right, and then again, always match whatever you do on one object with the other that's underneath it, and that kind of obfuscates the hard edges that it has. So here I'm just kind of going over. So this make, kind of makes it seem like it's all one piece. And I'm going to do the same thing over here.
and just kind of, you know, make it seem like it's all part of the same object. And then uh, let's pick this color and beat that thing back a bit to there. All right, so now um, I think this top part I'm pretty happy with. Pick these handles over here. And let's fill them this color. And again, these are all kind of low poly models, so just a little bit of, unless I'm going to be zooming in on it, I just need it to, oops, pick to. When you're painting, make sure you don't pick sculpting brushes and really mess up your uh, subject there, right? So just kind of a little bit of, you know, kind of work there, but that kind of makes it stand out. Okay, so there's that. Um, cloth I'm going to do last. Let's go on to, uh, I did this piece like right here. I'm going to do the mass by cavity to this like that. And... Um, invert that mask and then let's do a little bit of massaging on this thing let's blur it invert it and then switch color fill object switch color let's see what that looks like oh that's not what i wanted to do okay one more time let's go back to what it was um, okay, so what I want to do is, um, I want this forward, okay, and then in that one area, in these crevices, I want the darker colors to fill on J, and then do this, yeah, here we go. And this is what that looks like, and that looks great. I might just need to add to it a little bit. And again, I'm doing this asymmetrically just to kind of get, okay, there it is. Okay, time to do the same thing with this piece, so low it out. Right. So this piece doesn't have any thickness, which is really weird, right? If I turn double on, you can see the inside. But I think I extracted this thing out without any depth, which is fine. Um, also, was I using this thing or not? Is the other question. Let's see. Is it better with it there or not? Let's do that real quick. What if I remove it? Mm hmm. I think I like it being there, so I'm just going to keep it. And I'm going to um, solo it out. Oops. Solo it out. And also, this one I'm going to do a different kind of masking. So I am going to go to the masking menu. And I'm going to do mask peaks and valleys. Oh, yeah, look at that. Perfect. And invert that and fill object and do this yep look at how cool that looks bam there it is and now just go in and accentuate it a bit and again this thing doesn't really let me just accept it's a dynamic nope let me just add one low subdivision level here so it holds the paint better Right, there it is. Okay, I think that works. Now the thing with this is that it's kind of not selling what it is, so I need to do something to it. 
Um, sometimes, you know, you discover these things later on in the game. So what I'm going to do here, the good news is it's got polygroups. So I'm going to uh, select this polygroup right here. Mask it. Invert that mask. And what I'm going to do here is... Um, the center of this and push these in like that just kind of create a little bit more of a border and I'm going to push this whole thing out just a little bit Move this up. Okay. Something like that. And let's see what that looks like without the paint, without the mask. Yeah, I think that looks a little bit better. Maybe tuck these pieces in a bit. There, that's kind of selling that piece a lot more. Hit it with some smooth. Here we go. So you can see you're always kind of tweaking your model, even after you've modeled it, uh, doing some paint work. And that's kind of good to, because sometimes if you give it to a... If you're working on, on a project with a bunch of artists, you give it to a paint... You know, usually a modeler gives it to a texture artist. And then the texture artist wouldn't know how to do this stuff sometimes, so they send it back to you and, you know, you're kind of doing something else at the time. It's kind of a pain in the butt, so it's kind of fun when you're doing both. But you don't want to do both because then you kind of dilute yourself. You can't win. If it's not one thing, it's another. I'm going to hide these guns just because they're getting in the way too much. Uh, if you guys have any questions, again, please ask. I'll be more than happy to answer them if I know the answers. Uh, most of the time I do, but sometimes I don't. All right, I'm going to straighten these things out a bit with the uh, clip curve. I don't have symmetry on, do I? Or perspective on? Nope. too much. There we go. Do the same thing on top here. And one more. All right, I think that looks much better. Uh, the paint looks okay. I think I don't really need to do much else to it. Um, except maybe break symmetry just a little bit. And um, maybe do a little bit of this. Okay. Um, yeah, so if you guys have questions, I mean, we're kind of getting close to time here. It's almost nine o'clock. I'm going to stay a little bit longer today, but, um, just cause I'm on a roll. And, um, so if you have any questions about anything you've seen today or any, anything ZBrush, just ask, uh, and I will try my best to answer it for you. All right, here, mask by cavity. There it is and invert that mask. Now I can already see there's going to be, there's not enough jump out here. So I'm going to just do one subdivision level here and then do the mask by cavity. And you can see that's a lot better. Invert the mask, fill object. Invert, invert, invert the mask. Here we go. Now fill object. 
and then do that. So this is really a very dark color, which is not what I want. I want this color right here. I don't know why it's getting the wrong color, but let's try this first. Fill object with that. Okay, here we go. Oh, the mask is still on. And then let's do fill object with this. No. Nope. cavity, inverse the mask, I just do that here, and then switch color, fill objects, here we go. By the way, blurring works uh, with painting as well, and uh, I'm just going to beat that down a bit, it's too much, and I still have symmetry on, break symmetry, and let's pick a different alpha. This is kind of an interesting one to do. Uh, spraying with as well. I'm assuming this is going to be a little bit darker since it's kind of near the guns and whatnot. Okay, so that's good. Um, all right, let's do this piece. Right, so right off the bat, I'm going to add a subdivision level to this. Maybe one more. Let's see how it's holding paint. That's good. I don't want that alpha. Let's switch, go back to this one. All right, mask by cavity. Not too many cavities here, but it's giving me like some interesting uh, dirt over here. I guess I didn't really have this straight. That's good. And um, invert that mask and fill object, clear the mask. So it's kind of giving me a little bit of an interesting area over here and uh, I'm just gonna get rid of this sharp border over here. Again, this is symmetric, it's fine. And let's see what that looks like. I think that looks okay. Again, this is all symmetrical, so I'm going to break symmetry and do some of this work non-symmetrically. And again, similarly, I'm going to go to the object underneath it and just try and get rid of some of those harsh edges between the subtools. So this might look like it's taking a long time, but actually I've done quite a bit of work. I've almost done the entire haul um, in two hours, which is oops, not bad. Um, all right. Good thing this autosave is happening because I didn't save it once. And if I crash now, I will be tearing my hair out <laughs> uh, thinking that uh, it should have saved. All right, so we're kind of getting close to time. I think I'm going to go a little bit longer just so I can get more of these, uh, some of these hull pieces. But I think I'm just going to do the hull um, online and then I'll do the rest of it off camera. And then next time I'll have it all painted uh, and then we can just pose it. I was kind of hoping to be done with this sooner, but I think the painting, I'm taking uh, my time doing it because it's looking good. And uh, I think um, I'm just going to kind of continue to uh, to do it this way. Because at first I was thinking, you know, I'd kind of do some very light painting, but it's going so well that I think I'm going to, uh, I'm going to do this kind of paint job. All right, so let's do a quick render to see what this looks like. And then I also want to do a BPR render, um, not BPR, an NPR, non-photorealistic render to see what it looks like. But let me just do a regular render first. I just noticed a couple of things I need to fix.
All right, here we go. I really like how this is looking over here, this area. Um, that paint job came over, over nicely. And this area here, I, I think I need to do a little bit more detail work. All right, here we go. Here's the render. Yeah, all these are coming out really nice. They're coming out pretty much the way they look. So I'm happy with that. Okay, let me do a NPR, a non-photorealistic render. Um, see how that comes out with the paint, and then we'll just call it night. Okay, um, so with that, I'm just going to hit comma here. I'm going to turn Redshift off for a minute and go to uh, filters. And I'm going to go into some of my filters over here. And let's see what it looks like with this. That actually looks pretty good. So you can kind of see some of the painting that I did is coming across here uh, in the non-photorealistic render, and it's creating a really nice effect. Uh, I don't know if I like this gradation that's going on over here, but I haven't painted that part yet. When I do, it'll look a lot better. Let me do one more. Let's see, one more like this. Let's see what that would look like. And then we'll call it a night. Again, if you have last minute questions, I'll wait a few minutes uh, to answer them. Other than that, uh, I think we'll be done for today. Yeah, that that a lot of that's coming out really nice over here. So like if I wanted to use this in some sort of an animated thing, uh, this is a really nice effect. Uh, like if I was going to make a comic book or something like that with this, it, it would really work out nicely. All right, let me do this one more time. Maybe from this angle, like here. Turn perspective on, that adds to it. All right. All right, that came out good. I, it's uh, cast a nice shadow, and I can kind of see the surface noise here. And definitely you can see some of the, the coloring work in the cavities and whatnot. All right, so with that, um, we will call this a day. Um, so basically what's going to happen is next time I'll have painted the whole thing. So I'll just take some time during uh, the week, hopefully I have time, uh, and paint the rest of it. And then once we're done, uh, the posing is pretty straightforward. Um, I am just need to move the different pieces to where they need to be. Uh, maybe add some sort of a terrain or something to it, like a ground, uh, like some rocks and whatever, and then just do a render. All right, so with that, um, I bid you all a good day or night uh, or whatever time of uh, day or night it is. Uh, and uh, wish you all um, some happy ZBrushing, and we'll see.